So one of the things that come to mind whenever I think about Anthem is the sheer number of quality of life features that Bioware managed to pack in it. What's up everybody, Crazy Gaming here and today we're going to be talking about some of the biggest quality of life features that will guarantee you have a very good experience in Anthem. And after playing the game for myself and checking possibly every single piece of footage released so far, I must say I was left quite impressed with how much emphasis Bioware is putting on a good player experience. So when I say quality of life features, I'm mostly referring to convenience obviously. And depending on how convenience is executed matters a lot in a video game such as this because that can either be good or bad depending on how it's done. It seems that with Anthem, Bioware is keeping the difficulty for when and where it matters as in the encounters and the gear progression while making the features that support this feel good to use. I'm going to explain all of this in a bit so don't worry but in the meantime if you enjoyed this video obviously a thumbs up would be super appreciated so let's get started one of the first quality of life features I was impressed since the very beginning which also addresses concerns people have with other games such as for example destiny is the matchmaking system it seems that with all of the recent info we've gotten this feature was a little bit overshadowed but let me bring that up to light a bit nonetheless anthem features a very snappy match matchmaking system for literally every possible activity in the game. If you want to join up a certain stronghold, mission or any other type of activity, you can simply open up the expedition menu, pick up your desired destination and then the game will pretty much group you up with other people randomly who are also looking for the same type of experience as you do. It also helps that the game runs on its own servers so everything in the world is in sync which includes the time of the day in the virtual world of Anthem, the weather itself and even the open world events and everything else that is shared. Additionally, the game also has a built-in party invite system, so you are more than free to group up with your own friends if you wish. I know this type of stuff existed in video games long before Anthem, but it is funny to see other big games out there without it, which is why I wanted to mention it. So yeah, at no point will you feel alone in this game, even if your friends don't play it, as there is an entire community for you to connect with. But since we've talked about strongholds and expeditions, I know a lot of you guys still have questions about possible issues you might encounter due to bad internet connections and disconnects and whatnot. So what happens if somehow you disconnect in the middle of a stronghold for example or even worse right before killing the end boss which is most probably the worst thing by far that can happen to a player. If you disconnected from the game and the party is still engaged in that stronghold then you will have roughly two minutes to reconnect to it. And by the way this time window though is still subject to change so if the community finds out that two minutes is not enough then the developers have expressed the idea that they are willing to extend it if needed. Now if you happen to disconnect right before the end screen such as for example right before eliminating the end boss then you don't have to worry about losing your XP or the items you've picked up until then and what happens is that the next time you go on the expedition and finish it and reach the end screen of that you will see the XP being added on top of that towards the end of the expedition so no you will never be rolled back unless there's some severe technical malfunction but for the most part you will keep whatever you had acquired. Now the question that remains is what happens to the items? Normally dungeon crawlers do things differently depending on the type. Some of them will only let you keep the items that you physically picked in your inventories while others have a system that will mail you those items upon completion though the second example is is a little bit more rare than the first one. In Anthem though, there's a combination of these two, so yeah, let me explain. For regular, non-rare loot such as common items, common weapons and so on, you will have to physically pick these ones off if you want to have them towards the end of the mission. These will not be mailed to you at all and they would otherwise be lost if you don't pick them up. The rare stuff like for example the masterwork or higher tier items, if you somehow miss them then don't worry the game will mail them to you when the expedition is over. The reason Bioware chose this route is quite simple and that is because they still want the game to feel like a looter shooter which means that picking up items for yourself is important and it should feel important to the player but they also don't want the players to lose out on potential hard to get items that might get lost out of tech 
technical reasons. Now at number 4 I will preface this by saying that Anthem has a lot of potential for build diversity for each existing javelin. There's a lot of stats you have to keep in mind, a lot of modifiers on gear, which is why you'll most probably respect and adapt your loadouts depending on the encounters. Luckily enough, there's an amazing loadout page in your forge that will let you create 5 types of profiles or loadouts for all sorts of builds. And the game pretty much lets you create whatever theme you want to, save that one up, and whenever you're feeling like it, you can just swap to it before going on a mission and whatnot, and you will look pretty much the way you want to. Another important one is coming up at number 5, and this is in regards to the control customization in Anthem. Now I cannot give you an answer for the console version as I haven't played on that one, but I did play on the PC version and there are a lot of options in there for a lot of stuff that you can fine tune. In the options menu you can find sliders for the flying and moving sensitivity, there is one for aiming and zooming as well, inverting controls and pretty much everything you need in there. The same goes for the graphical options so it's quite extensive compared to how other games do it and I believe it's the same for consoles as well though it's a little bit restricted because well you're just playing on a controller and by the way speaking of controllers you can also use one on the PC if you want to. Another cool little feature I will mention real quickly was revealed in the past live stream and that was the team tracking widget and it's pretty easy to miss. You can see that on the left side of the screen in the party UI and here is where you can see the normal style stuff like the player's HP bars, but there is also this neat little indicator on the left side of the HP bar that also shows you an arrow pointing out to that specific party member, so this is pretty useful especially if you're left behind and want to group up with the rest of the team, you can pretty much see exactly where they're heading or where they headed and the widget itself will point you towards that direction. Another big question surrounding Anthem is what happens in the early content when you reach the max level? Or better yet, what incentives do you have to even go ahead and play that content again or possibly even help up your friends to level up faster? Well for the first one there will be an enemy scaling or better yet you will scale down with the content but despite all of this you won't immediately feel weaker but rather it's all done out of balancing reasons and I'm going to explain it to you right now now, yes you will technically deal lower damage compared to max level content, but since you're much better equipped at higher levels, you will feel very powerful compared to how you were at low levels and the lower level content that you're doing, so you can pretty much say that yes you will feel overpowered for that type of content and that is because of the type of gear you're wearing and not of the level that you have and that's the main way you're pretty much going to evolve in Anthem, you're going to acquire better better loot at higher levels, which in turn will make you feel more powerful against the enemies, it doesn't matter if they're low level or high level, you're just going to on average do better DPS. At number 8, while it's technically not a quality of life change per se, it can definitely be one, so it's been confirmed recently that rain, just like any other source of water, will let you cool off your jets, which in turn will let you fly for longer, and the cool thing about this is that if there's a storm incoming and it's raining, it has been confirmed that you can fly for much much longer, but there's still going to be restrictions in place for how high you can go, which is pretty much dealt with this turbulence that happens when you go on high altitudes, and you can also get zapped by lightning during thunderstorms, so yeah, that's going to be a problem for you if you're spending too much time flying, but still, it's going to let you on average fly for much much longer. Finally, at number 9 and the last one on the list, we have the contracts and there's been some info being shown in the past few days. So contracts, for those who didn't know, especially legendary ones, are a type of repeatable endgame content, mostly fighting related, and this will reward you good XP as well as some very good loot. The quality of life feature about this is that they are all dynamic, which means that you don't have to do the exact same encounter over and over again, which can feel quite repetitive. Obviously it's going to be in a certain thematic so to speak, so depending on who gives you the contract, you will see 
see the same type of theme going, but it should feel less repetitive if you did the same encounter over and over again, which is a good addition. But that's pretty much all I have in terms of quality of life features in Anthem. There's probably a lot more behind the scenes, but for the moment, this is what we have. Now tell me in the comment section below, what is that one thing that you like about Anthem and gets you excited about playing it? If you have any to begin with, post them in the comment section. I'm curious to see what you guys are excited about. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new and also leave a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. I would super appreciate that if you did it. But that is all for now. I will see you guys later. So peace out.